so today we are going to discuss some docker commands and about the images okay so once we log into this machine um yes, we can able to check with the docker command okay so docker ps is the first command which we are going to learn docker ps is going to show us the running containers which are the containers are created and those containers it is <coughs> going to show and docker ps iphone a it will show the containers which are in stop state also okay we can stop the containers and we can start the containers like how we can stop the virtual machines and we can start whenever we want same way here also we can start and stop the containers so if we are using if any means all means uh, even it will show the stopped containers and uh, ps will show only the start containers so let me create a container first so docker run iphone it like uh, centos bin bash okay so this is the first container i'm going to create and it is getting created and the centos so let me explain this command so what is this command so docker run so here docker run means it is going to create a container then what is this it it's an interactive terminal okay so i equal to interactive and uh, t is terminal means it will create a container and will go inside the container if you see here so right now i am inside the container previously i was inside the aws virtual machine where i executed this command but now i am inside the container okay so if you you can see the difference cat uh, etc os release and this is a centos operating system means i am inside the container to go inside the container we use i interactive okay so that's why we use we can use d also the same command we can use docker run hyphen d hyphen t image name and shell so here d means detached mode so detach means it container will be created will not go inside the container so once we go into the container whatever uh, you want to do you can able to do the activities so this is an centos image because here and this one is the image name and this centos is the image name we are going to give and this is a shell so you are accessing the shell so once we log into this container you can able to check with the uh, ps ef okay basically in the linus we'll check the process ps ef you can see the shell which we executed here we can able to see that process and whatever the command executed ps only these two processes are seen but generally in linux if you create any virtual machine or any physical machine if you take if you just check ps ef lot of process will run but in container it is not running any process right so whatever the application we run only that process will run why because this is very lightweighted container which is using the very basic image which does not contain any uh, binaries okay so everything it is going to use it from the where it from it will use The bare metal os okay wherever it is hosted so right now again i'll come back so if you can just do exit come out of this container and you see docker ps it is not showing why because when you type exit in a container the container will be in stop put state okay if you see here exited because this is in the stop put state and right now again i am inside the AWS virtual machine and here I'll type PS-EF You can see these many processes are running minimum Okay, so if you want to count it PS-EF 85 processes are running 
But whereas in container, only one process, that is a bash, which we use to execute the shell, that is the only process it is running. So that is the difference. Okay. So these containers are going to use the base image, like uh, wherever it is hosted, the Docker host, that image it is going to take all the libraries, binders, whatever you want. It is going to take only the basic image. Okay. And uh, when I type Docker PS hyphen A, Okay, so here this is a container ID for every container. There will be unique uh, ID is going to be created and uh, This is a which image it is used to create this one and uh, the command because the bin bash We were using to log into that machine and uh, that when it got created and the status whether it's running or it's exited and We'll discuss about this uh, maybe a couple of uh, minutes later about ports and this is a name Okay, so this name by default is given by the docker okay so these names are names of some scientist names okay all over the world the famous scientist names it is going to provide okay so if you don't want these names you can able to give your own name for your container so if you want to know just search this Okay, so he is a uh, Persian mathematician, astronomer, philosopher, and poet. So the scientist names are going to be provided. Okay, so if I create one more container, so Docker run hyphen d hyphen t centos bin bash. I'm giving d y because I don't want to go inside the container. So this is a SHA code, 42 digit SHA code. It will be created for container and uh, first. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 digits container ID it will show docker ps. So here again, if you see, this is a another name. It has been it it stores some scientist names in the Docker configuration. From there, it will pick up and allocate some name to the random name to the each container. And this name also, if you search here and uh, So he is a uh, is also a mathematician and political activist. So this is how the names has been generating. Okay. So if you I don't want that, yes. So uh, <clears throat> minus t is for terminal, right? This command. Yes. Yes. And what is this bin bash used for? So when you want to go inside that container, which shell you want to use it? So in Linux, we have a lot okay. of shells, bash shell, okay. on shell, okay, C shell. So which shell you are providing to your container that we are deciding. So if we don't give anything. Anything means? So you don't want to give shell. Yeah, if we don't provide anything. Yeah, it will be created. So to go inside the container, we are using some shell. Okay, so which shell you are preferable? Why I use bash because we can use tab right whenever you want to search any files like uh, Just I will tab and uh, it will give the files list, right? So that's why I use bash so you can use sh also ksh So in case if it is available inside that container so bash means you want to go inside the container and you will get the shell so without giving this also you can have to create in the detached mode but uh, in the later can we choose that yes when you want to go inside that container now for example container is created now i want to log okay. into that container docker execute iphone it and the container docker ps and uh, this is the one so docker execute iphone it container id and this way you can able to log in again so once container has been created if you want to go and log in into the container then this is a command we can use 
ओके ओके ग्रेट आई अंडरस्टूड थैंक यू Uh, I have a question. So you are creating image, image, right? So are you pulling this image from any repository, or you are creating as a yeah. new image? We'll come to that part. I am not creating any image here. I am creating containers here. Okay. I not yet created any image as of now. I am creating a container. Okay. So I'll come to that part about the images. Okay. So today the complete topic will be on the images only. so now this containers has been created and uh, i was talking about uh, this processes and this names so we can give our own names like when we are creating the container itself in the same command we can give the names also to our containers so again let me come back to uh, from this uh, container so if you don't want to uh, exit this container you want to run so you need to use control p option i forgot that option okay. control p q i guess yeah control p q so here if you see docker ps the container will not stop okay one container was created by using detachment mode and this is a container just now logged into that container without it uh, without stopped if you want to come out of that container then control pq you can press so that you can come out of that container okay and now you can see in the docker ps both the containers are showing it is not in the uh, stop put state so you can use uh, docker and uh, start container id and docker stop container id then it will stop and start okay so docker ps this container has been stopped so if you want to start it i can docker start and this is the container id okay so this is how it is getting created now uh, the question is like someone asked uh, like everyone should have the doubt when i'm executing this command the container is getting created so when the container is getting created it is using some image the base image okay so where it is getting created like where it is getting pulled that image so basically uh, those who are from the infrastructure background they might have idea okay maybe windows admin or linux admin or anyone in traditional data center how we are going to install the operating system like for example let me uh, explain in a detail way generally <coughs> before devops okay how the scenario was there like um, there used to come some request to the linux administrator or windows administrator and this will be the data center and uh, the administrator will sit somewhere in a remote location maybe the hyderabad chennai bangalore so to the data center we used to connect and we'll have physical machines and in this physical machines vmware or hyperv is going to run and if we get any request from the application team basically we'll send a mail from the application team and as a administrators windows or linux administrator they will create a virtual machines inside this and they'll have an iso image and with that iso image uh, they'll use uh, if it is linux they'll use a kickstart file to create images automation if you just give the kickstart file it will create an image it will take the iso file and it will install same way windows i'm not sure windows how windows guys will install the operating system maybe they'll also use some automation method so the virtual machine gets created right and this virtual machine uh, will do some fine tuning os hardening uh, and then we'll hand over it to the application team so that they will connect and they will install their application because we create a user account for them they will have access to login and they can able to do their work okay this is a second guys someone able to not join it seems so
okay then we can able to uh, give it to the team they will connect and they will install their application and it's their responsibility we will the os administrator responsibility on so we to manage the os and uh, the hardware this is how previously but now when in the devops also the same scenario will be there but uh, the devops engineers is need to take care now no need of any linux administrator or uh, windows administrator now like whenever the developers are writing the code so they will do the check-in code check-in and um, it will go to the source code management so if they configure webhooks with this uh, source code management so what Jen jenkins will do jenkins will uh, pick up the code and it will do the integration part whether it's a java or a, uh, for php and uh, python it doesn't require a uh, build okay so directly we can execute that uh, code but for java or for dot net uh, it should build okay so java will use uh, um, ant or maven as a build tool and it will create an artifact and uh, that artifact will be stored inside the artifactory maybe it's an uh, nexus or jfrog so then with this var file now it should be deployed onto the any environment whether it's a development environment or it will be pre pro environment any environment it need to be deployed so here environment where is your environment is it in your traditional data center or is it in cloud if it is a traditional data center then it will be a uh, other physical machines and this will be a virtual machines will be created so it should be ready or you can create at the time of uh, deploying also jenkins is having plugins so it can be able to go and create or else already this virtual machine should be ready so that this artifact is going to be deployed on this machine which contains the os virtual machine os and it will be running and uh, this is one way but now if these are microservices and it should be deployed onto the containers and again same whether this is in uh, on premises or maybe aws or azure or gcp cloud wherever the customer is having the environment so <coughs> same virtual machine means same concept but in the docker need microservice so what it is going to happen so let's say if this is your virtual machine and inside this virtual machine this is a base os and uh, these are the containers are getting created so containers will be not ready before itself so we are not making ready containers first and then we are not going to uh, deploy the var or jar files so containers get deployed on runtime itself I mean whenever it's getting deployed at the time it will be created the containers okay so here we are using different images for this containers so from where we are getting these images okay for containers it's getting sent to us a lot of images so where we are going to get images so we are going to get images from the public repository okay so this public repository okay so we have a docker okay hub dot docker dot com so this is the location where docker will pull the images so when i'm executing this uh, docker run iphone it like whatever the image name i'm giving so from here it is getting pulled at images okay so lot of images it is providing the advantage the beauty of this docker is you can able to get lot of images okay so here in this previous scenario when i was telling virtual machines concept manually we are installing the operating system let's say if you want any database server if you want any jenkins server if you want nginx application anything you want first you will install the operating system on top of that manually we will install the software okay vmware is not providing us any images we will just install the operating system and if you want http web server we will install http if you want nginx you you will install that and you need to re, uh, install the prerequisite software also if it is expecting any java 1.8 version you are going to install okay if it is expecting any libraries we are going to install but here the docker app is providing the images with a package okay so here centos image is a only os it's an os part but if i type docker run iphone it and the image name is nginx okay 
then it will give you the nginx image nginx image means what it contains the operating system it's like a layer okay it contains the operating system and top of that it will have the nginx software installed and prerequisites also will be installed inside that image so you no need to do anything you just create a container with nginx and it is going to be running with complete nginx you are not going to do anything so this is one layer the nginx software and what are the prerequisites it was expecting that will also will be available so these kind of images are providing by this docker like for example mysql mysql database if you want to create a container for mysql database so mysql uh, official image so there will be two types of images will be there one is private images another one is official images so if you see mysql is an official image means providing by the mysql means as it's a docker container okay so to this image you can use as a docker container which will be very less size and you can see the downloads how many downloads are there so if you click on this this is a command docker pull the image name so we'll come to that part docker pull what it will do and this is a description how you can use this image also they will provide you some details so if you see docker and iphone name you can iphone name means as i said it will not give you any scientific scientist name you can give your own name whatever you want to your container okay and these are the credentials we are passing to connect the database once it's, it will create and uh, how to connect the database after creating all these things have been given over here okay so this is my sequel like this lot of images are available okay like for example jenkins you want to create a jenkins server you no need to install anything you can use this docker image and you can create as a container and that will run as an jenkins server you don't need to install java okay so automatically it will be there and the jenkins software will also be there so it will use some operating system image as i said so it will use some operating system base os and uh, on top of that maybe it will having java also 1.8 and it is also having with jenkins software this complete package it is giving as an image that is a beauty of this docker so you will get lot of kind of images apart from this for your own application for your java application microservices you need to create your own image okay so that will be decided inside this uh, ci or cd part like uh, how the image will be created whatever the var has been created by using that var will create an image and that image will go and store inside uh, another nexus repository or jfog repository and from there we are going to deploy container with that image that in the cicd part uh, we'll discuss how we are going to plan that but as of now we are talking about these images okay hey, Praveen, quick question yeah. so what is the is there any difference between uh, this docker jenkins image versus uh, installing jenkins from scratch on a linux server because uh, if uh, this gives everything definitely it's a great advantage because uh, we need not install any dependencies like java and all but whole yeah. world should be using whoever is having docker should they use uh, jenkins docker machine or are there any some drawbacks or disadvantages with this compared to the regular version of jenkins installed on linux so drawback is only one thing basically we don't prefer docker container as a jenkins why because why we use jenkins to build the um, artifacts right for example yes. it's a java application java guys will do will write lot of test cases in their applications to run mm -hmm. those test cases it will it, it needs lot of resources maybe lot of cpu and ram it will expect to complete those test cases and to create that artifact so your mm -hmm. docker container you need to provide lot of resources so instead of that it's better to go with a virtual machine full fledged virtual machine so that it will perfect very fine and uh, if the resources are less and uh, it will take lot of time to complete the build process mm -hmm. so instead of that better to go with the um, 
virtual machine which can have less sufficient cpu and sufficient ram enough resources are there then it will the build jobs will be completed on time okay got you so one more question yeah so where does this you know like all these images sets okay let's say you know like uh, i am uh, uh, doing it on my ec2 uh, linux machine so if i do docker pull jenkins or any any uh, image okay so hmm. where does it come and set which part so here we can able to see inside this machine so you can able to see with the docker images so here when i executed uh, docker run command always i was using the centos for the first time when i executed this one it doesn't have the image in local so that's why you see here uh, if you see here the first time when i executed this command so the docker run if an it the image was not available in this local machine so unable to find image and uh, it was pulling from the docker up okay so once it is done the next time if i am using the centos image to create another container it will not connect to the docker up it will connect from the local itself it will able to pull the image from the local itself so whenever i am creating another container so it did not give unable to find because it is already available and from there it picked it up and it is giving that container okay so in the docker images we can able to see this information and uh, this is the tag also we'll discuss about this what is this tag that is also very very important okay so this no, no, way I, mean, I, have, I, I yeah. asked like so this is about the pull which he told okay so what i'm asking is so if i do mm. a docker pull okay so it pulls from the internet okay and mm. i mean where does this uh, you know like uh, all these uh, images resides in my machine in my linux machine you mean to say where so this something ha where it is stored hmm so basically everything will so be go and stored inside this var lib so for every version this location might be changed okay so image I think it's containers. It's stored by layers, so we can't see them. Varlib Docker containers. Uh, Varlib uh, Docker image container. Containers will show the containers information. basically it should have a directory called images so i can see only the name is image these are only contents what are the contents we created it will create the uh, directory structure with that container sha code and we can see the country information basically inside this image only it should store under varlib docker there should be a directory called uh, images so maybe in this version of the docker i'm not sure where exactly they are going and storing okay i will check and i'll get back to you in this one okay are they not in those in those containers if you go into the containers can you see if there is a sorry so uh, you just mentioned there are checking overlay overlay to is for storage okay 
So whatever the volumes it gets created to each container, they will be stored inside this overlay tool. Okay. <coughs> so it will be contains the information of storage volumes, whatever each country is getting allocated. So images should be stored inside this image. There should be a directory called images. So I'll check and I'll get back to you on this. Okay. Now in this version where it is getting stored the images. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay, so this is how we are talking about the docker images. So we'll get a lot of images from the docker hub itself. Okay, so if, apart from official images, we have other images also available. So we can use them. So if you want to create an nginx uh, images, we can able to uh, use the nginx images also. Let's say uh, docker run when it or let me go with the detached mode mm, nginx so nginx this is the first time i'm using nginx this is nginx we can use for as an uh, nginx web server and nginx is also used as an nginx ingress controller so here the image was not available in my local machine that's why it connected to the docker hub and able to uh, get the image and if you see docker ps so this is an nginx image Okay, if you see here, this is the Nginx image it is running. Now, uh, we'll discuss how to give the names to this one. So, docker run uh, iPhone D, iPhone T, iPhone iPhone name, um, Nginx server, and Nginx. So, now if I check docker ps, if you see, this is the name which I provided here. So this way also we can give names to our containers. So what are the name you want? Let's say I am going to create another container. Docker run hyphen D hyphen T. Same name should not be repeated. Now Nginx server one and hyphen hyphen host name. I am going to give host name. Mm. Nginx prod and then Nginx. This is also created so docker ps so what is the difference between this name and this name you see the both this is a name so this is the name of an container and this is a host name means when you connect to that container you will have an host name like for example as of now uh, this is a host name for my virtual machine which i'm logged in right now aws machine the so same way container will also have the host name. So let me connect to this container. Docker execute. That's it. Okay. So this is a host name or else instead of SH. So let me use a bash. If you see here in the bash, it is clearly showing this is an host name so that is a difference that is a host name and this is a container name both are different container name to identify that container and host name when you log in we are giving some host name so i am going to connect to a container which i did not give host name docker by default it will give some random host name to it See whatever the code is there that is showing as an host name the SHA code the 12 digit code it is showing as and for every country it will show the same the, their container um, SHA code will be shown as an host name but if you change if you want to change the host name of your container we can give in this way you can give hyphen hyphen host name everything we can give in the single command like in future when we talk about docker networking at that time you want to assign an IP address that IP address also is going to Assign from here itself. Okay, so Docker and command itself. We are going to give the IP. We can give the subnet everything. We can give it from here Okay, so now what I'll do I'll uh, Docker RM I'll just give the container and this is to delete the containers <coughs> RM command Okay, I am inside the container so Let me come out docker rm so 
so i'll delete and again i'll create uh, both the containers why because see when they are in the running state you cannot delete them so you should delete them by uh, stopping them docker stop and then you can use the docker rm command both the container has been deleted <coughs> now let me discuss about uh, port forwarding so what is port forwarding so here let's say this is a virtual machine and inside this assume we install an operating system okay any centos operating system we are talking about virtual machine and uh, let's say this is a web server so web server in linux we have two web servers are there either http or nginx right http and nginx both are for web web servers configuration you can use either http or nginx both will serve the same web service hosting the websites so both uses 80 only port number if you installing http it will use 80 and nginx also use 80 port number so as you inside this machine a uh, nginx is installed okay and it is using 80 port number how we can able to access it the ip of this machine in the browser you will give http the ip of this machine and uh, for 80 we don't need to give the port number by default apart from 80 if your website is running on any other port then we should give the ip let's say simply to understand i'm giving this this way we need to access the web uh, web service of this machine so in our scenario we are using aws machine so aws is having uh, two ips by default one is public ip and one is uh, private ip let me copy the ips and uh, this is a public ip and this is the private but in real time you will have only private ips because you will be inside the private ip network range in your organization so we don't have any public ips for our uh, machines so we will connect because this ip range will be assigned to your machine laptop or desktop so we can able to connect to this virtual machine with this ip so in real organization you are going to use this way only and this is ip and like port number whatever the port the web service is configured but in the lab in the present scenario we cannot able to access this machine with private ip because we are connecting through internet we are not we don't have any vpn connectivity between this aws and for uh, my location so that's why we are using public ip to access anything right so in our lab scenario we are going to give public ip that is the only difference to access this now <clears throat> this is a scenario if i install nginx this way i am going to configure but in the docker this is a machine virtual machine same virtual machine and assume this is a bare metal is sent os now inside this lot of containers are created and assume all are nginx but different websites are hosting all are different websites but all the nginx is using 80 port number okay by default they in the configuration file it will be defined as an 80 port number only so here it is 80 80 so then how you are going to access each website each different website so now the same way here also it is going to have that uh, same ip okay so here also let's say 18.232.86.95 and uh, here also 172.31.39 182 <coughs> okay this is a private ip this is a public ip now how we are going to access this specific container which is hosted that uh, web application assume this six different websites are running from external world how can i able to access this so
so here comes the port forwarding because if i able to access 18 from the website 232 uh, 86.95 like port number if i'm giving to which website it will connect there are six different websites are running so that's why we configure as a port forwarding okay so here we are going to use docker run docker run hyphen d hyphen t if you want your name in the next one and uh, this is the image and i am going to give hyphen p 80 80 80 okay and then if you want to connect bin bash or else not required so what is this p means port so i am giving i am doing port forwarding left side port is to connect from the external world right side port is available inside the container okay so this is like host level access so host level means what so here this is the docker host okay so with this ip we are connecting this is a host level like uh, 8080 so with this it will come to this machine from internally this 8080 is mapped to this 80 so likewise you can configure 8081 to this one 8082 to this one 8083 so whenever i'm accessing this machine with uh, 18.232.86.95 8080 8080 is the host port so it will come to here and internally it will request map to this 80 okay so this is called as an host port and uh, 80 is called as an container port so what you need to do you need to allow 8080 port number inside your security group in the firewall if it is a data center virtual uh, data center then you need to allow in the firewall if it is a aws or azure or uh, gcp you need to allow in the security groups because till host it is coming as an 8080 and internally it is mapping this 8080 to this 80 port number of this container not only 8080 you can use any port number basically we have a uh, uh, 1 to 65,535 ports are available apart from uh, 1024 means 1 to 1024 ports you can give any number okay here 2000 3000 4000 5000 any range you can give okay so basically we use in the real time 8080 8081 okay so for this one we will map to 8081 okay and then we'll give 8082 for another country this way we are going to give so now we'll see how we can achieve this one okay so i'll create docker run hyphen d hyphen t uh hyphen hyphen name nginx1 and uh, nginx hyphen p8080 okay we should give image at the last okay it's created and uh, for the second time i'm going to give 8081 and uh, the name should be two different names i am giving and if you check docker ps previously if you see this was not showing per remaining containers if you see here okay so now this is port forwarding so this is left side is for host and right side is inside your container now how to access this one now uh, i need to allow the sec um, inside the security groups so let me go inside this virtual machine and this is a security group concept just open it i'll just allow the port 8080 and 8081 open it so incoming edit add rule custom tcp 8080 and for everyone
and then another rule I'm adding for 8081 and then save rules okay so both the ports has been added because it will come to host with this port range now let me go back uh, to the ec2 dashboard and uh, take the ip okay now i took the ip and uh, let me able to access if you see here we are getting and uh, let me able to access 8081 still we are unable to get so if you want to see the difference okay i am really connecting to two different containers or single container is giving you the information so for that let me clarify it so let me connect to the container docker execute if an it bash so inside this container when nginx is installed so wherever this page is coming it is using some index.html so i'll go there and i'll change uh, some value i'll add new line okay. cd usr share nginx and inside this we have a directory called html and here we can see index.html so if you see this index.html the same web page okay welcome to nginx the, the title head of this html page the same thing okay so inside this i'll write a line but here in the container we don't get all the commands okay because it is not installing how we will get the commands by installing some packages when you are installing the operating system you will get the commands because the command related rpm packages get installed but in the container you don't get all those rpm packages that's why it's very tiny the image sizes and you cannot able to get the commands if i type want vi here vi is not available okay the basic cat will be available very basic commands will be available okay so now i can use a uh, cat command to append some line inside that nginx index.html this double means what i am going to write something inside the file okay i am appending some line this is nginx server one okay if you see again index cat index the last it will be updated here so this is how we can see the difference right now um, etc init.d nginx restart so that it will uh, apply these changes and we can able to see now uh, i can see the difference now let me go back available talker where is server 2 nginx docker psi for near docker start okay now See, this is a line which I added, okay, which is getting for 8081. And uh, if I use 8080 port number, it is not going to get, okay. So this way we can confirm, okay, we can able to access this. Again, 8081 I'm giving, it is able to access. Understood, right? So this way in real time, we will do port forwarding to our containers, whatever the, because directly we cannot able to access. To your container because container is not for the external world container in the networking topic we'll discuss detail about how it is going to communicate with your host so it is this containers will only communicate to your host network so what are the ip range you have so this ip range private i forget about public ip in real time we don't have public ips what are the private ip range is there to that ip range this containers can able to connect but 
it cannot able to connect directly from the external world okay so we should connect to the docker host machine from there internally we can able to reach the containers so that's why each port each container we can assign different port numbers so that we can able to access understood right so this is about port forwarding yep can container ports be changed see here whatever you assign to a container again you cannot modify it okay again you need to create a new container and uh, same command you can execute docker run and give the new port and that image number which your image let's say uh, assume as of now i'm using the sample nginx images right assume in real time this image whatever i'm using here uh, this one image name assume this is an application image okay means which is created with uh, having the application content inside this one so again what we will do you will give another name to your new container you will create it if you want to change the port number run it and then you stop this old container this way you can use you cannot change the values to your existing container let's say if you don't want to give 8080 uh, 8081 running container of this kind of you cannot give it 8080 you want to give 8085 so create a new container with 8085 with the same image and then you stop this old image that's it's possible okay even if you assign an ip address later on you want to change the ip address so you cannot do that you cannot go and modify to the existing container like how we do into the virtual machine that is not possible you need to create new container with that with the same image and you can stop the old one okay i mean i am asking about the, the other part uh, can you switch the tab sorry i am asking about the other part okay so there is i mean one is host port the other is container port right yes as well as asking can what you are talking about this one 8080 yeah 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 that you can change in the configuration file if you don't want 8080 default port whatever they are giving you you can change mm -hmm. inside the container uh, the, sorry inside the configuration file which configuration file mm, let me log into this container because uh, the first part is at the ec2 level okay host port the other part is at the mm. container level so i'm asking yes so container by default engine is why it is using 80 because it is defined that go and use 80 port number by default those are default port numbers like uh, ssh okay. is using 22 why it is using 22 because in the sshd <laughs> config file it is defined as a use as a 22 if you don't want just change it that's it uh let me see if uh, i mean uh, in real time uh, do we change this uh, uh, container no. ports no, no right we don't change for application oh, see this is os related uh, by default nginx is using 80 so in your real time if your application whatever the application guys if it is java application whatever the port is configured by them inside the java application that will be available inside that image let's say this is app one is the image of application so whatever the port they are using in their application that port will be available here at the time we will give whatever the port they are using let's say if they are using 3000 port inside their application then we need to use 3000 port number here as an uh, application port then only then it can be reached to that container okay so here uh, one uh, question so yep. we generally access website using port 80 right so how hmm. can we configure website with uh, these ports 8080 8081 how to configure website with 8081 port like galaxy.com if we type hmm. like we have to address uh, this ip colon 8081 yes yes how can we do actually that that can be configured in the dns Okay, okay. So we can configure different ports also. DNS. Yeah, you can give these rules. See, these rules will be added in the address record if you have a DNS. There you can able to add them. So DNS entries, if you add this with this port number, this IP, then it is going to be used whatever the URL you have defined over there. With that URL, you can able to access it. Okay, that will be internal to the network, right? 
uh, where you are adding it depends upon that okay if it is in the public dns server then it can be able to access through external world if it is a private dns server only within that private network only you can able to access it okay 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 it, like good that if we can add uh, 8081 also yes. right Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Thanks. Even in uh, this year, instead of going GoDaddy, if you are using AWS, AWS is having its own uh, domain registry. Okay. There also you can do that. It's recommended because again, your uh, AWS DNS servers, you need to go and add it inside the GoDaddy. Instead of that, you can purchase the domain name inside the AWS itself domain registration. And there only route 53, you can able to configure it. So you don't need to go to the GoDaddy. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that helps. Thanks. Okay. So here, I'm yeah, throwing one more dive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, how uh, these containers are getting IPs? Sorry? How containers are getting IPs? That will discuss con every that container we are getting IP, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, how uh, this container is getting ip that we'll discuss in the networking concept we have complete session on the docker volumes and docker networking there i will show you how these dockers are getting ips what how we want to give our own ips that we'll discuss in the networking part there is separate session on networking okay okay fine okay so some people are pinging in the chat okay so uh, i'm not sure whether they don't have mic or itself i don't know so here in the docker whatever uh, we are getting the images okay so basically we'll have a repository even in the real time also whenever we create the images that images will be go and store inside a repository okay so there will be nexus artifact is there and um, jfrog artifact will be there if you configure that this will be useful to store the var file or jar file of the application and same way it can also use to store the images okay and uh, if you are going to the cloud for example your environment is in cloud cloud vendors are providing separate artifacts you no need to create a virtual machine on top of that you no need to install nexus or uh, jfrog they are giving you an artifactory like uh, aws is giving ecr and uh, azure is giving acr uh, google cloud is giving gcr these are called uh, you can store the images container registry we call it as a container registry azure Container registry google cloud registry and uh, aws elastic container registry so you can store the images of your applications here what we'll do this variable is created right by using this var file we are going to create a docker image and that image just can be stored inside the artifacts so here we instead of creating a nexus artifactory or a jfrog artifactory we can use this public repository like uh, uh, like how we have a github but basically in real time we don't use public uh, github right we'll have our own uh, github server private server there the developers will write the code and uh, they will store it why because why why we'll have our own private github server github or bitbucket why we don't use a public repository of github because we do we want to keep we want to keep our code uh, safe and uh, private within, within our yeah. organization exactly so we don't want to put our code into someone else uh, uh, storage so that's why we'll have our own server same way here also this docker hub is a uh, docker is providing a repository so for our personal purpose lab purpose we can able to use them but in real time we don't use the public repositories so here if you see we can able to create a user account same like github we can able to create a user account and once we log in we can create uh, images also and that images can be stored here so for as of now temporary purpose what we can do we are taking for example plain centos uh, image and we are creating a container let's say on top of that i'm installing some softwares okay and means from that again from that container i can create an image 
and that image I can store inside the repository. And why we need to store in the repository? Why I want to store it here? So when the entry is created, why it should be stored in the repository? We can we use can this see. image for some other host. Okay. Yes, that is a one reason. And another reason is if something happens to this local machine, then all images will be erased, right? So if it is in central location, then it will be in the safe side. Okay, that's the reason we will store the uh, images in the remote repository. Okay, so let me show you now um, how to create a image. So we can take any image and we can create a container and uh, we can uh, sorry we can take uh, any image and we can create we can install some uh, softwares inside that and uh, from that we can create an image and that image we can store in our own repository okay so like a here, snapshot yes okay let's say docker run if an it cent os let me log inside this one so I'm logged in inside the container. Okay, I think here. Yum mm, install HTTP. So I'm using CentOS, right? That's why I'm using Yum. If you are using Debian or Ubuntu, we should use the uh, app to get. So I'm installing a software now. Yes, HTTP software and. Uh, to configure it as a web server, etc. init.t. Service command system CTR. etc. init.t. There is no command to start this service. Okay, let it be. Now, some software has been installed, right? So this software, assume, them, assume this is an application and uh, this is a software which is running. Now we want to take the image of this container because it's a container now. Now I want to take the image from this container. So let me come out of this uh, container and then we can use Docker commit and uh, before that let me capture the container id docker ps this is the one so docker commit container id and then here whatever the repository we created here okay here i created a repository you need to create one repository whenever you create your account we can create a repository and this is my repository Pravin Corvi is the repository name. So I should give this uh, same name here repository name and what is the image name you want to give here. So I am going to give HTTP server. This is the name I want to give for this image. What are the image I am creating and uh, then you can give as a tags. So tomorrow session still we did not complete about the image part still something is left. So tomorrow I'll talk about this uh, tags also. It's very, very important about the tags. And this is the tag I'm giving as a one. Okay. Now if you check Docker images, you can able to see this is the image got created in the Docker images with my repository name. And uh, this is the image name. Now, how to push this image to my repository? So first of all, what I need to do, I need to use Docker login. Okay, because I don't know which repository this local machine should go and connect. So that's why we are providing credentials to go and connect to the repository. So Docker login here, the username. Oh my God, I forgot the password. 
let me try okay login successful it's connected to that one okay now what i'm going to do docker push okay and this complete name this way we need to give it here now it's completed pushed and if you want to see here and you just refresh See, this is an image is available here in my public repository okay so the same way in your organization what are the nginx you are using or maybe sorry not nginx nexus you are using or uh, jfrog you are using it contains one uh, url okay the location of that what are the repositories created for you so that in that repository we are going to store the images in the same way okay so where from wherever you, want, you are creating images and you want to push it so in that machine you just use uh, this command okay so when it's with the container you can able to create an image and that image so this image contains what centos on top of that http package is running so in real time if any changes basically we don't create images okay because uh, sometimes we create images if any changes has been done to the application level at that time it will be created so this is about uh, images concept so whatever we discussed most of the things we use same in the um, real time okay so tomorrow we'll discuss a little bit more about uh, this tag the purpose of this tag and uh, the layers image layers also we will discuss okay if you have any doubts in today's session you can ask me or else we'll wind up for today's class Uh, Pravin, will you provide all, all of these commands in our chat? I will send, I'll upload this inside the Google Drive where you can able to see this, right? like uh, from wherever you are getting these videos. Inside that, okay. I'll upload it. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Sure, thank you.